This week on Meathead on Mushrooms, say something. Yeah. Oh, this week. This week on Meathead on Mushrooms, go. Totally sponsored by Butt Cleavage. <laughs> Try again. This week on Meathead on Mushrooms. Butt Cleavage. So the question is, why doesn't he grow up? Why does he still behave as a child? How can we help him get rid of these leftovers from childish behavior? That's the second most point in the You've ever said, God. Those motherfuckers in their pointy shoes are going at it. <laughs> me in the face <laughs> Woo! hey guys <laughs> hey guys <laughs> we're not even that high no we're I think it's. Oh, I'm tired. We're I'm in a gym. We are. We're tired as fuck. This is the first right time now. we're recording in a gym. Um, I'm tired as fuck because that, that took way too long to set up. That we, you know, it it's really amazing. The, we can have a radio show yeah. anywhere, ever, anywhere. We're in a gym. Look around. Yeah, it's my is where I work. Is where Alec works. Titan Fitness, pretty solid gym. Uh, big props to Wally for letting us record in here. Thank you, Wally. Wall's that was awesome of you. Um, but dude, it's, it's not that easy. <laughs> like, we're halfway. It's, we're figuring out, but also like if it was just like 40 years ago, you would need like a whole building with an antenna in the back Definitely. to do exactly what we're doing. This would cost with a box. We're doing this with a box jump thing. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. It's pretty awesome. Off all shit that we ordered on amazon.com. Yeah. Props to Amazon and uh, props to Starbucks for these Trentas. Powerful Starbucks. Some good shit. Um, Alec. Yeah. What is up? I know we've been talking for about, I don't know, the half. last 48 hours. Yeah. So we've exhausted a lot of topics, but yeah. what's up right now? I think um, it's a real skill to be able to identify what's going on in your immediate surrounding right now and focus on that and bring that out. Like people that are very good at communicating, the best conversationalists that I know, they're never talking about the logistics of how we got here, where we're going, where we live, where we work, where we play, you know, map stuff. The best conversationalists are people that can pick out exactly what's going on in this moment right now and, and deliver that and package it into words and then deliver it to people around you. It's w basically pointing out the elephant in the room. You know what's times. going on with me right now? What's up? So right now, I'm physically fighting off um, a hangover. Mm. I've been drinking the past... I've been drinking the song the past <laughs> three days. Smoked a lot of weed. And um, finally came for the first time in like fucking weeks. Wow. And uh, my body's now getting hit with caffeine, so I'm having all these weird bodily... You're in a bender. Yeah, well, a perpetual bender. Uh, of many things. Yeah. Fitness. Yeah, getting a lot stronger. Uh, orgasm. <sighs> that was fun. And that was really good. Your, nor your so typical like weed and alcohol. All these like weird, weird releases are going. I like so. I'm just fighting all that. I'm not fighting it off. It's just taking over me. It's I, you look a little beat up by it. I'm a little beat up. Yeah. I told you August. I'm gonna stop drinking for a whole month. And now that I said on the podcast, I Dude, have to. I always, I always <laughs> figure find that when I do that, I fuck it all up. Like when I set a date and I say I'm going to do this for this yeah. day till this day. You instantly set your up, yourself up for for failure because you you get sort of arrogant about what's going to happen in the future. Like you don't know what's going to happen. It's true. In August, you know what's going to happen in August? Mm. My bachelor party. That's in August. Yeah. Oh, um, never mind. I'm drinking in August. I'm a liar. <laughs> Already lost. This, this is what I mean. Yeah. Like Fuck. when you set those dates. Like when I, I, I. This is a good topic because I think it's not a good thing to be too precise in your expectations, when, even when it, when it comes to 
training, when it comes to getting over some sort of a vice. How do you navigate your goals then? But I think you can still arrive, you. but you, you have to set your expectations more generally. Okay. You well, know then what I mean? should like, say. For example, I'll like, if, okay, why don't you want to drink for August? Like, what is the goal to be achieved? Less alcohol consumption. So I guess why? I can, oh, because it fucks me up. Because you don't feel good. I don't make as many gains. I could see myself not Because it's hurting you yeah. in the weight room. Right. So it's not really about not drinking. No. It's, it's about be getting lifter. gains in the we'll weight room. lifter. So maybe um, instead of saying like from this, from August 1st to August 30th, I'm not drinking alcohol, maybe saying from August 1st till August 30th, I will make this sort of a gain in the gym. And yeah. that will be, that would you know, incentivize you to not drink or to as much anyway. Yeah, right. Like yeah, it's a, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. It's true. I mean, if I it's simple shit like if I just train super hard during the week and then on a weekend, maybe have well, a it's tr- not a hard rule, right? right? I mean, I got strong as fuck when I was in college, drinking a ton every yeah. weekend. You know, I mean, we were in the weight room like puking our guts out <laughs> twice, a, like three yeah. days a week. Yeah. It was really hard. I mean, thinking back, it was the hardest training I've ever done in my life. It was college. Awful. That was the hardest. Oh, between sophomore and junior year, that was the, that was the time. God damn. Yeah. Why was that hard for you guys? I don't know. I don't know what it was about that year. I think a lot of. I think for me, it was extra hard because I was trying to prove myself. Mm. You're you're going from being the backup, the starter, graduated. The job, the starting job was open. Everybody was fighting for it. Yeah. The incentives are higher. You know, you're just working harder. High school was the hardest for me. High school yeah. wrestling team, that was the hardest training I've ever done in my life. Nothing has ever even come close. What was so bad about it? Not even fucking remotely close. It, was, it, it wasn't even the physical activity that was hard. I mean, not sure it was fucking hard, like running and doing push-ups. And it'd make us work till the day would go two hours of physical training, two hours of wrestling. But it was just the mental side of it. Like, for, for like I'm sure anyone who's been on a wrestling team will know, but... It was fucking brutal. Every fucking, like, just the mental, if, you're, if you can't handle someone screaming in your face and having to fight another human for two hours and then having to go pick up weights for two hours and fighting that every day, you, don't, you can't be on the wrestling team because you'll run more than the fucking sprinters. You'll, you'll be in the gym just as much as the football players, and then you got to fucking tackle <laughs> another human as your sport constantly. It's just the hardest thing you'll ever do mentally. And then on top of it, you're cutting weight. You got to go down. Like, it's, it's all these weird factors. It really sounded grueling. It's a terrible grueling, but man, I'll tell you this though, when you're done, whew, a lot a lot of things don't bother you as much, especially yeah. in the gym. Like passing out isn't scary anymore. Right. Throwing up isn't scary anymore. Yeah, man. That's um makes shit easier. That's a weird I'm trying to figure out what the fuck is going on with these headphones. Do do yeah, do do You give up? Stop caring, yeah. See, cause the weird thing is like I can hear yours. Yeah. You can't hear mine. I can hear you. You can hear me. Yeah. It's just hollow. Weird. Sorry, we're learning still. Forgive. Yeah, whatever. I mean, we're editing this down anyway, so. <laughs> They're all being edited. But yeah. From now on out. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're, we're, we'll put. Audio or, or video? No, we'll put the audio up. Right. The okay. whole audio will be there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anybody that's listening to headphones, I apologize. Hey, you're. I'm only coming through in one ear. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, what high school. Think, what do you think vicious. the toughest sport of all time is? Toughest sport to of compete and train for? No, yeah. Toughest sport. Uh, <coughs> MMA. Of all time? Of all, yeah, I'm going MMA. <laughs> I disagree. What do you think? Gladiator training. Oh, well, I thought you meant like modern. Okay, it's of all time. All time. Okay, fine. Fuck it. I guess I'll go gladiator. <laughs> Imagine you feel like, like there is no ready. losing. <laughs> like we act like, oh, wrestling is so tough. Yeah, yeah, make no. Us work out. Yeah. no, like you're a slave and you're gonna fight a tiger. Yeah. Enjoy. Good luck. Here, here's, here's not even a sword. Here's a spoon. Prepare, <laughs> prepare a one month accordingly. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, at any moment you're gonna be put in the dungeon. That training sucks. It's awful. Because if you don't, there is no losing or slightly getting injured. If you're fucking hurt, guess what? You're killed. You're a slave that can't fight anymore. You're done. Life Just expectancy done. is not very long as a gladiator. It's not very <sighs> like productive Nobody life. wins that. How great a movie was Gladiator, though? <laughs> it was an awesome movie. It's a great movie. It makes you feel like a goddamn warrior after watching that. 
or bitch. Just the movies like that. Like Braveheart, every time. <sighs> it's amped. Every time you watch it. What Even is it? knowing that Mel Gibson is the way he a is. A racist piece of shit. I fucking <laughs> love it. It's so awesome. He's not even like, I don't even think of him as racist. He's just fucking crazy. Is it? Don't you think there's a difference between racist and crazy? Well, doesn't he openly like, Shat on Jews. Yeah, doesn't he really hate Jewish people? Yeah, is that like, a race or religion? But and they're also in, like Jews. The the Jews and the gays are notoriously in charge of media. Like they yeah. run Hollywood. They his run profession. the fucking show. They're his <laughs> his bosses. <laughs> like it or not, like it's just the truth. It just is. Wow. And um, you, like you'd have to be crazy <laughs> to like. <laughs> To say the type of shit that he does. So, like, I think he's more crazy than racist. And he's just a crazy dude. Like, he's yeah, just he's also racist, but it's also, like, that crazy person shouting on the corner, like, yeah. just screaming the nonsense. Aliens. Like, yeah, they can say crazy racist shit, too, but, like, first and foremost, I'm like, you're just, you're an insane person. Dude, what is it about Don't acting in and theater that attracts fucking insane people? What What is that? Mm. I was having that conversation the other day with someone, like, not only does it attract crazy people but it seems to be like a really good outlet for like gays gay guys yeah and i don't think it's because gay guys are better dancers or better actors but i feel like it feels though on a well there's a lot of gay guys in uh theater like right that's what i mean broadway musicals right yeah i don't know so <laughs> i don't think it's that i don't think they're better i, I mean singing and dancing right but it does make sense it's singing and dancing as a profession yeah which gay guys seem to love to sing and dance I like to sing and dance too. I think that's just a cultural thing. That, yeah, like yeah. for some reason, as a straight guy, you're not allowed to sing and dance. I'm sorry, yeah, I was trying to get singing and dancing is probably fucking fun as shit. That's what I mean. That's what I'm trying to get to. Like, Imagine? I think so socially, I think we for we put straight guys in this position to where they can't enjoy something as awesome as singing and dancing. <laughs> so, so gay guys just get to do it because no one's gonna I put know. them down for being feminine. Yep, they They'll can be, be feminine. But if you're a guy and you resemble anything that resembles femininity, and you're straight, you're not yeah, good. we have to like shut that up Why? right away. Close that door. Is that a hatred for women? So I think in a weird way. I had a great conversation with a guy the other day about this gay guy about it, and I asked him what that was all about, like the over femininity. You know the the sort of full. You know the you because you know the guys that are oh it's clear as day you're gay. Like yeah. I could hear you say three words. You like you know. walk into a room and it's like hello and it's like, oh, bitches, okay. yes. and it's like <laughs> it's oh Uber. like. 100%. 100%. No <laughs> doubt. There's no doubt yeah. this guy's gay. But then there's other guys that you would never know. Um, so uh, my friend gave me the inside scoop. He said that it had to do with um, sort of how much you were bullied growing up. Whoa. That it's sort of like a response. It's an over, over response to, like, bullying. So, like, uh, okay. if I'm giving... Um, uh, you're a gay guy, and I'm giving you a hard time, like growing up, and like, like, hey, fag, why don't you like go sing and dance, fag? And like, yeah. eventually, you break, and you're like, I'll fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> I say, I'll fucking talk like this. I'll wear a goddamn wig and get up on seven foot tall stilts, and you know, uh. it gets, it, it'll push because, you know, he also said like, the 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 angriest guys are the uh, super feminine, ones. super feminine guys. I mean, it's, it's like just it's just a response, and they're shooting in the opposite direction. So, and it I'm also strange. not trying to like overgeneralize. What yeah. I'm trying to do is like open up what I've heard, yeah. and I'm just trying to like logically guess through something. Yeah, we're not guessing. I'm not so trying to, to be the authority here, like because I know yeah. somebody's gonna hear this and Get be like, really "You offended. are perpetrating lies." No, it's like, man, I don't, I don't know. fucking know. I don't know what it is. Uh, I heard somebody say this. I think it's an interesting topic to just discuss. You know, like God damn, it, didn't it suck? That we live in a society that's so sensitive that I had to just say that. Yeah, everyone, because because it's, it's true. It's real though. Like they it don't know real. you're a tan, so they'll think you're just some homophobe and fucking yeah. wherever. And then yeah. I got that. Um, I was I gonna say, I'm, God damn it. Yeah, I'm not a homophobe. I'm not telling you this is uh, some sort of definite or. or I'm sure that there's plenty <laughs> of guys that like to that are effeminate and yeah. uh, we're not bullied. I'm not. I, <laughs> End uh, disclaimer. Fucking, yeah. We're end, not assholes. End disclaimer. We're not assholes. <laughs> We're not assholes. Jesus. But no, I think I think there is some sort of overcompensation. Yeah, right. It's an overcompensation, and then on top of it, the, we as a society, a lot of people I think pigeonhole feminine dudes and gay dudes into air. Oh well, he likes to sing and dance, so he's obviously gay, right? When it could just be a fucking guy that generally likes expressing himself physically and da dance is really fun. Who doesn't like dancing? 
dancing's fucking awesome, but it's super feminine, I guess. And I think what's even more interesting is that in that is on a society level, we bash femininity. So is there like some weird hatred for women? Like what makes women women? Like why do we not like things that are feminine as a group of males? Like what what is that? Because that's what it comes down to. Like it's well, well, it's, it's mm, you embodying women I don't know. traits. Okay, okay. Somewhere along the line, where did it turn negative? Okay. Like, so yeah. uh, up until this point, I was just stating femininity like objectively. Like right. it wasn't good or bad. It's just femininity. You're the one who brought in the negativity why do we assume it's negative well, nobody said it was negative no not you but a lot of people well what i mean is like growing up like there was there's always that one kid that likes to fucking sing and dance and whether he was gay or not is irrelevant but then you'll get like you know his peers from like oh you're fucking gay because right. you like to sing and dance well that's just from rednecks and right like but, but and, why and is racist that bad sexist is that what it is fear okay do you think i mean like yeah, the, I mean, it's from people that are afraid that somebody else is gonna say that about them so they just it's it's the, the fart game <laughs> <laughs> the fart. Like, well, no, like if you uh um, if you fart and you're the first person to be like who farted nobody's yeah. gonna suspect you it's the same shit like it's the guy pointing out oh you're a fag you're like singing because yeah. he's worried about somebody else pointing that out to him because god damn singing dances is fun as shit and he knows it better than everybody <laughs> so he's gonna be the first one to point is that it the out. guy that secretly thinks sticks are yeah. delicious yeah, yeah what's, what it is? dude what's that rogan joke it was that's driving me crazy I, the other day i think that's what it is what what it, how's it go he, be, he pretty much just goes i think rogan goes um the guy that to hate on gay men is often the guys that secretly thinks st- Dicks are yeah, delicious. Th- or there's there's two lines to oh, it. Oh, isn't it? He says if, if a Mormon can convince you to being Mormon, they could probably convince you to, to sucking a dick. Because he was yeah, talking about Ted Haggerty or whatever. I'm gonna look it? this joke up right now. I'll put that in the video. It was driving me crazy the other, the other day. <laughs> it's a funny joke. If you if anyone happens to listen to this podcast that doesn't listen to the Joe Rogan podcast, go ahead and give that a listen. You might like it. We f- I mean we wouldn't be having a, a podcast. If we he completely wouldn't. inspired us. To do our own podcast. All right. There's only two reasons to hate gay marriage. Was that what it was? Okay. There's only two reasons that you hate gay marriage. You're dumb or you're secretly worried that dicks are delicious. (laughs) 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 And it's so fucking true. It's like, why would anyone, like a sane person, not like gay people? It is strange. Has that ever crossed your mind? Like the idea to not like them? Being mad at them? Yeah. For being whatever. The only thought that's crossed my mind is that if I am not also mad at them, other people will be mad at me. So there's social pressure. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I remember being a kid and being like, ha ha, fag. Like, I remember saying but that like, as you a don't, kid. But you don't the know. only reason you say that is because you don't want to get picked on yourself. Yeah, you want to fit in. It's shitty. That's true. That's why people don't want to. Like, that's probably why most people don't want gay marriage. They don't really oh, care. Yeah. They're just afraid somebody's going to. They want to fit in. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're in a religious group. Dude. If you're deity. super religious and you're in a group, a community that's based around uh, a deity that would put down uh, that act of relationships or that form of relationship, of course you're going to fucking say uh, gay marriage is bad. Because oh, not only is your God saying it's bad, but then all your fucking friends who are also religious are saying it's bad. Fitting in super scary. is a motherfucker. Yeah. It's a shitty feeling. Like, think how much... Well, no, I mean, think how much trouble it causes. Yeah. You say one weird thing and then wars. What do you say? Wars. War, yeah. Racism. Sexism. Like there's there's a lot of uh, fitting in. It's all like just out of fear. Um, we were talking about somebody earlier, and I said like yeah. it, it, when it all boils down, it's he's afraid of not fitting in. Yeah. And that's why he has all these sort of like personality flaws about him. Yeah. It, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're an individual who's constantly struggled to fit in and you never quite get it and you don't get those social norms and cues, you will become a guy that says and does weird or rude shit just because you really tried to get in there. You, I mean, if I think, but also, is there is there a good? Uh, I don't know. I also kind of feel like those people who don't quite fit in, maybe they shouldn't. <laughs> like maybe no. there's something about them. Maybe. Maybe, maybe it's t- evolution. We were talking the other day about <laughs> certain people. Maybe they j- like just that are supposed to exist, and they won't procreate. Right. And they will die off. That's what we were like talking about. That, that line of DNA will just end. That's what I mean. Like we, You talked. You said we had an incident the other <coughs> night, and you compared uh, letting someone know that they were doing something wrong with antibodies fighting off a virus. 
And that might be the case with some of these people. <laughs> I do. I kind of think that we all have a responsibility to correct cuntiness. Yeah. Like, the there we, we work as a society in that sort of way. And if someone is... If someone really does need correction, I don't think there's anything wrong with, like, executing out what it is that humans do to correct ourselves. We're yeah. like... Uh, we're like um, um, White error cells. correcting code. Yeah. You know, we we correct ourselves like just through doing what humans do. And yeah. I, you kind of, you gave me like some good reasons to feel guilty about what I did, <laughs> and I thought about it, and uh, I didn't didn't yeah. feel any guilt yeah. about it. Well, you weren't mean in retrospect. You weren't mean to it was said a person. It was a harsh thing. It was just honest. I will not. I will not. It was brutal. And honesty. the idea that was propositioned by that person <coughs> was shut down with great force and and, and intellect. Essentially, it wasn't even intellect. It was just just extreme honesty. The, it, that's that's a weird thing. The brutal honesty. What like it shouldn't be brutal. No, the honesty should be like easy to take. It sh- what should be brutal is lies. But the thing is, lies have become the norm. Lies have become the expected. Like, if you are if you are not perpetrating this lie, then you are being harsh on people. You are being I mean. Think, I think lies are easier for people. I think it's nerfing the world. I think it's bullshit. You think so? Yeah. Because I also kind of feel like lying is a lot easier for certain people. Because well, it's easier because it's not going to hurt anybody's feelings. Right. But in telling the truth, like you, that means you have to actively work to get better, like better in yourself. Like the truth is like sh- a recognition that you are wrong. And then with that, you know, knowledge now, you have to better yourself and work at it and train just like anything right. else. And I think that's why people would just rather not tell the truth <laughs> is because it's admitting you're wrong. And no one likes doing that. Because it's, it's br- you have to cause a b- uh, behavioral change. And um, I think that's the position that person is now in from the other day. And I mean, gl- it's the hardest thing ever to do. Yeah. Um, say, like, I'm not good at something or I'm wrong at something. It sucks. Or, oh. <sighs> yep, yep. Like, I suck at something. It's awful. It's the first step towards getting good at anything. Yeah. Is admitting you suck at it. But it is so hard to do. Super fucking hard. So hard, man. Remember that? All right. So I told you, I know a few weeks back, I wrote this paper for school. And I thought I was like, I thought it was great. I got really good notes from a, a teacher. She, uh, she right. said she liked, she said, oh, it was really good, right? And then she, she had, the other day, she had sent me back um, a very in-depth analysis of my paper. Because I asked her, I was like, please give me an in-depth analysis and break it down for me. And let me know where it could have been better. And I'm thinking, yeah, you know, it'll be some things here and there. And I'll be fine. I get it back from her. And I, mind you, I got an A-plus on this. And, dude, reading these notes, you would think I got an F. Like, it was just – and she wasn't mean, but she was just honest. And she was – like, she showed me exactly where I did, went wrong. And it was just like, oh, man, my ego was just boom, eviscerated after reading that. Like, I felt like I thought I was an okay writer before that, and then I got, I was like, oh, my God. I was, <laughs> it was just like, I fucking suck. <laughs> like, why would I, like, in retro, why would I put that there? She's so right. It's like shit like that when you have someone just like, just like, oh, here's your artwork. Gah! Here's everything wrong with it. It's just, it's just, See, I, it, I want <sighs> to do that. Right. But this so is what happens just, to me. When I start doing that, then I like overdo it. Yeah. And then I find myself like I'm it, it cuz it's a really fine line to cro- to be on. Like telling people the brutal honesty, but like not going out of your way to be too like to be a know-it-all, to be a sort of let me point out the flaws of everything all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cuz you can overdo that too and you're just being annoying. It makes you a dick. Yeah. Just, you're a just fucking being, <laughs> dick. being a pretentious asshole. Yeah, cuz <laughs> everything you're you're contrarian on everything. Yeah, it makes you do, do you see that way. You know, you, <laughs> you know what So I, where's that line? You know cuz because I want to uh I want to tell the truth. I I want to go against social norms from time to time. But I don't want to like go all out juggalo yeah, so a social j- juggalo norms. You know, the, the social that's norm. the full end of the spectrum right like yeah, those yeah. guys have reject all social norms <laughs> and have not only rejected have like have Attack pushed the other lately. way yeah like uh yeah yes exactly even just physically like just d- for spite they will disrespect publish public norms by like yeah. spray painting their face for no reason. like it's biting off your nose literally biting off your nose to spite your face you're, you're fucking it yourself up just to go against social norms like you don't want to go there. You don't yeah. want to get worse. You don't want to become a shitty person just <laughs> to like point out. Or, like, I I think one of the key things in work. like trying to 
accurately portray let's uh, uh, why an idea is shitty is not attacking the person or persons that's uh, put out that idea because then you go from conveying how to correct a point to just being mean because that there's nothing wrong with that person but with the idea that they said and maybe the, the train of thought that got them there right so you know like you don't like you don't Hit a dog because it knows not because it doesn't know to sh- like you know not shit there yet. Right. It's a new dog. You know what I mean? It's not the dog's fault. Just gotta train it. Just hasn't learned. It's, it's not, not the dog's fault. Yet. So just what, you don't punch it. Like it's not gonna help anything. Guidance. That's just mean. Direct sh- direction. I think that's why it's so hard to raise a kid. <laughs> <sighs> don't hit kids. Because you gotta man, that's gonna be hard. Because you can't really tell them what to do. They'll no. just fight back. They don't know. They don't fucking. Yeah, they know. don't know. They have to sort of learn on themselves. And yeah, there's no difference between that person we would talking about just now and children and us there's no difference between us and children yeah. this is some, some things we just gotta learn shit's hard we're all learning still too yeah god I learned a lot D- does it feel like time's going by slow yeah I think it's cause we're really enjoying it is that what happens I every day so. does feel pretty special though yeah I'm enjoying every you single know? day every day feels like it matters lately even like today I haven't I, I haven't eaten like what 10 hours something yeah. like that still had a solid day yeah today was fucking awesome <laughs> it was fucking great <laughs> like you know what I mean, like shitty thing. Or, I'm sorry, quote unquote, like in parentheses, things that people. Oh, I haven't eaten all day. I was like, oh, no. still having a really good day. It's all. Yeah, it's it's very much perception. Right. Yeah. You know, you can be having a really shitty time if you want to. Like, uh, there could be a lot of people in your shoes right now that just decide that this is a shitty time. Yeah. I haven't eaten in ten days. I haven't, you know, I've been sitting at a bar or ten days, ten hours. Ten hours. I've been. uh Sitting at this bar for the last three hours, <laughs> waiting on. Fell asleep for a while. Waiting, he fell asleep <laughs> for a little bit, got kicked out. It was really funny. Had to go wait outside my friend's place to yeah. like go do this podcast. Yeah, no, like there's some fucking shitty, sad people out there. That if they had that same day, they'd be like, I had the worst day yesterday. Yeah. And you're having the exact same day. And the reality is, you're having the best fucking day ever. And like, oh, it gosh. totally more convincing that the person uh, that that would say. They're having a bad day. I don't believe those people that say they have bad... Like, those people who gripe yeah. and complain about those miscellaneous things, I almost don't believe them. I think they just need something to do, and the uh, the easiest and quickest emotion to pull out of anybody is anger. It's a lot easier to be angry than it is to be happy. Like, you have to actively recognize and perceive things to be positive in order to be happy. Like, you see how awesome it is. We have to work for it. Like, I actively think all day why... You know, my life is really fucking awesome right now. I'm trying. I'm not being braggadocious, but that's just how I feel. Um, to be angry, super easy. Fucking Obama, fucking all these taxes and shit. Like, like it's so easy to do that. Turn on the news for five minutes. You watch Fox Fox News for like ten minutes. The world blame. It's super easy to be angry. Go through life blaming. We talk about that a lot. Sure. Uh, weak bitches, man. It's it's the weak. It bitch is syndrome. the weak bitch syndrome. You know, you just complaining about your circumstance it's not my fault it's this person's fault it's no. the weather it's oh i spilled something on my shirt oh i uh twisted my ankle oh i forgot my shoes oh i l- just tired i need a nap oh I, this person did this <laughs> to me you know like you can go through your entire life like that yeah putting shit off on other people yeah it's super important man don't be a complainer don't and there's a lot of people Ugh, in my gross. family like that, and I, and it just you could see it. It's a lot of people. I'm sorry, in everybody's family, yeah, there's that oof. guy or girl. Everybody has a complainer. It's just, and that they just bitch and excrete venom, and there's not a single part of them that what they do. I, f- I don't think they want to be happy because that's too much work. It's it's too much like of an idea to to realize maybe how good they actually have it and to gripe and complain. It's interesting. I kept thinking about this quote the other day. The uh, our deepest fear. And and this this is uh, very profound because it this pertains to um, a an alleged experience I had last weekend mm-hmm. uh, on some uh, a uh, molecule called dimethyltryptamine alleged allegedly which um, it, it the experience reminded me of this quote our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate our deepest fear is that we were more powerful beyond measure or we are mm. powerful beyond measure and it's a, like it's a very interesting quote right because it's easy to have an out it's easy to have an excuse now what if you have no excuse for your situation what if that was the case what if we are all in the situation that we're in 
100% because of our own effort, because we are there, because it was our decision. Yeah. Motherfucker. And we have nothing, no excuse. So, like, the first moment when, almost like, okay, so in my experience, when I was uh, fortunate enough to break through to a different dimension and time was non-existent, you instantly feel like you've been there forever because there's no time. So you've been there instantly and forever at the same time. And it, it like, hit me like, like, like a fucking punch to the face that fear that it had all been up to me. Yeah. And it was that fear of, oh, fuck, I have no excuses. <laughs> that it's feeling of, like, I can't blame scary. that on anybody else you. except for me. Everything in my life was due to, due to my own attrition. Yeah. Jim Carrey, uh, a couple, maybe a month ago now, gave a speech at a college. It's pretty popular now. It went viral. It's like a basically a one-minute speech. And in that speech, he said uh, his father could have been a, a, an astounding comedian if he wanted, but he felt as though there wa that wasn't a real viable career path, so he found a very comfortable job as an accountant until one day he was fired from being an accountant. So now not only did he was he, you know, didn't pursue his dreams and his aspirations and failed regardless for the comfortable job. So how should I put this? He failed no matter what. Like he failed in pursuit of his dreams and he failed and even at the cush the job that he thought to be cush uh, cushiony. And Jim Carrey said, if you're going to fail, you might as well fail doing the thing that you absolutely love. And he was basically saying in that speech is live within the now. Realize that the series of choices you make right at this moment will affect you for the rest of your life. You have absolute control. It doesn't fucking matter if you're broke or you might be broke from following your dreams. It's or it, but it but what does matter is your decision to carry through with what you want to do. You mean you you just said it yourself. You are within control. Jim Carrey could have done the same fucking thing. He could oh you need to get a good job because at one point him and his family were homeless living in a barn or some shit, but he still was doing stand-up comedy at age 17, getting booed off stage. But no matter what, still following his dreams, took control of the situation, and now look at him. Oh, he's Whatever, man. Care. You're just a hippie, dude. <laughs> we live in the real world. <laughs> we live in the real world where shit happens. Oh, yeah. Okay, what about drive-bys and the yep. on the killing babies? What about yep. that? Would that Real baby life. want that? Did he want that? <laughs> totally that baby's fault. <laughs> no, I mean, but like that's what people say, right? Course, yeah. Like when they when they hear that stuff, they, of course it is, they that's say, an easy excuse. Come on, man, get real, get real. W this isn't a fucking dream, man. Tell that to fucking who's who's and, and you know who's the president of South Africa? M Nelson Mandela. Nelson, tell that to that guy. To, uh, tell him Nelson Mandela. Yo, well, go I back to reality. I think the point is, it doesn't matter. You're arguing details. The point is, when you believe that that's the case, mm. if you believe that you are in charge, if you believe that there are no excuses, and that it is up to you to, uh, wherever you are in life, is was your decision. Everything was your decision to arrive at this place right now, at this place right now, at this place right now. Once you accept that, and if you live your life like that, God damn, man, I live a much happier life. Yeah. I feel in control. Whether I am or I'm not, or I'm just like, you know, all of uh, yeah. the circumstances around me are causing me to do a predictable series of events right. that you could measure mathematically, whether that's happening or if I'm in 100% um, self-control at this moment, that I, I have autonomy over this moment. Life is a lot easier if I assume I yeah. have that control. Even if it's just a perception. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I'm still having more fun than you are. Fucking g get there, too. There's no reason to get caught up in that yeah, it's a, bullshit. Yeah, it's that quote. Um, I don't know if free will exists, but life is sure of a hell of a lot better when I think it is. Right. <laughs> right. Perfect. Y you know, like it's um, it's a y it's a way you can choose to live your life. And it, uh. it seems to be. It seems to be fucking way more rewarding. I mean, and not. I mean, and this isn't coming from two. I mean, obviously, me and Kyle live in the United States, and things are a lot safer here than a lot of parts of the world. But it's not like we've always had rainbows and butterflies all growing up, or or even even now to some degree. Like, we're not basically. I'm trying to say we're not like too privileged. We don't come from well, rich families, so of course it's easy for us to say that. You know. We've got our own struggles. Yeah, it's just like anyone else. It's just if you change the way you perceive things. Like if I mean, I could easily be a grumpy fucking guy. I could be super right. angry about the position that I'm in. Right. Totally justifiable. Totally. To some people. Totally. But, 
that's a bitch move. But it's it's like it's a weak uh, bitch move. Just be almost due to your own choice. You're just yeah. like, look what I I can just flip this yeah. right around. And if I didn't think, what would other people say about that though? Wouldn't they just be like, well, I'm just not that type of person. No one is. You got to work for it. You know. No, I I wasn't. I mean, well, like, maybe, you know. And then Alan Watts would say, "That's just the way you like to go through it. Right. Happy. They like to go through it. Sad. It's not right or wrong. Like the, the the people that are going through it, sad and pissed off and angry. They think we need them. Yeah, they're saying that's that's a way to do it. Also, and they're also a, an extension of you. And you yeah. can't exist on this happiness level unless there's someone existing on that sadness level. It requires a duality." It requires the opposite. If you have everybody that's happy, yeah. there's no more happy. That's just normal. Is that true, though? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Yeah. Show me how you could have... No, I understand the thing. If there's all black... Yeah. Where is white? There's no black. You can't have black without white. <laughs> you know that's what I mean? You yeah. can't... If everyone is happy, if everyone is just happy... That's not happy You're anymore. Tell me we need mobsters, bro. What I'm saying we is, like, we can't all be happy. What I'm saying is, at the end of this uh, dimethyltryptamine exper- experience, at the end, you I felt, I felt more strongly than I've ever felt that it's perfect. It's all perfect. Yeah. It's exactly the way I want it. It's exactly the way I would do it. Even my fuck ups are perfect. <laughs> you know, even the fuck ups of the world, the injustices, they all have a place. They all make it valuable and important. All matters, you know. Real talk made me um, very, very appreciative for my current situation. For sure, and that's that's like that's for sure. Something I read a, psychedelics have done. For I read a really great quote yesterday about this, um, about what psychedelics do. I, mm. I wrote it down. Uh, it was a Terrence McKenna quote. Psychedelics are illegal not because a loving government is concerned that you may jump out of a third-story window. Psychedelics are illegal because they dissolve opinion structures and culturally laid down models of behavior and forming um, and information processing. They open up to you the possibility that everything you know is wrong. They yeah. humble you. you Super know, they fucking humbling. I mean, they, I they, uh, they change the game for yeah. you, you know? I mean, I've only been able to sustain and obtain this um, way of thinking through psychedelics, and I don't necessarily just mean the chemicals that I ingest, but in the way I think. Like, you know, I grew up super religious. That in itself is psychedelic. All I thought about was a philosophy that was created by some deity that potentially lives in the sky. Now, yeah. once you remove the nonsense of it, I still yeah. ad- adapted to that philosophy, and I still really appreciate it. Like, love is all, like, lo- be love, embrace right. it. You know, and, in that, and that's fucking psychedelic. And it changes the way you think. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then when you take these other substances, psilocybin, for example, MDMA, whatever it may be, you're gonna stop. You're, you're never gonna think the same way again. Like you, like you just said, it destroys know, social How about structures. This? Watch that, that. I watched a documentary on Juggalos last yeah. night. How'd that go? All of them on ecstasy and mushrooms. Shit. And they were fucking awful. People. <laughs> 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 they were awful <laughs> as fuck. Dude, juggalos so are scary. So I, maybe this is like has something to do with what I was saying earlier. It's not just about the psychedelics. Psychedelics are like, they're a tool. They're a fork. They're not to be celebrated. Like they, they, the psychedelics on their own don't aren't good or bad. They can be just as much bad as good. There's just as much potential for bad in mushrooms as there is potential for good. But if you use the right way, they can be helpful for certain people. Yeah. So like. You know, just sort of going to them and like worshiping them and like saying like, "Oh man, they're just the greatest." I don't. They're yeah. a really cool tool. That's a good and point, man. They're definitely not encouraged by culture. I guess it's just the type of um, person that's going to use them. But I think, yeah, so for sure. Like so far, not. you and I have been able to benefit from them, <laughs> dude. Yeah. I mean, I've done a lot in the past year. If you think about it. We're at forty minutes. We are. Uh, you want to go for another 20? Sure. I'm fucking tired. So am I. <laughs> what are your plan? <laughs> What's your plan after this? I don't have a plan. Yeah, what either. about you? Astoria, you want to come? No. Cool. Are you What are you, are you going to that bar? The old ladies? Old ladies? Uh, no. Old lady You bar? said the old lady bar where that woman that was married was hitting on you? Oh, it was not old. Hot lady. Like, there were hot ladies there. Old ladies? Did I say old? Were, were they older than you? Oh, yeah. They were probably in their late 30s. 
what I mean. Gotcha. Yeah. So yes, then. When so I say old lady, I don't mean like she has to be like a yeah, hundred. Like grandma? Uh, no. Yeah. No, that's where I'm going. Just older than you. Yeah, older than me. Yeah. Like a thirty-year-old sort of being old lady to you. <laughs> I need to stop doing that. I keep calling people my age young, and I realized it the other day, and it seems really fucking annoying. Why? I don't know. I just don't want to come off. Like someone called me out for it the other day. I was like, oh, for shit. For being young? No, for calling other people young who are my age. Oh, really? Yeah. Like I, I refer to a friend of ours as young blank, and I'll say. And who's your age? No, he's much older than me. He's twenty-six. Oh. He's um much closer to you than I. I don't want to say his name. Well, know. you just called him young, like blank, like right. Like saying young Adam. Right. Young Alec. I just, I just feel like I'm, I might be doing it out of ego or something. I don't know. People are just taking offense to it lately, so I've been trying to. They've been taking offense. Goddamn, people are such bitches. They're so fucking sensitive. <laughs> Seriously, dude. <laughs> the fuck is that? I can't. Let's talk about this for a second. I was in a crazy situation the other day, and you know, I don't give a fuck if these people hear it. Hear it. I was fucking. I was at a. I was fucking. I was at a bar with uh, a good buddy of mine, Rudy Bustamante, episode twelve. Check it out. Um, with Rudy. Nine. Nine. Sorry. <laughs> Whatever. I was at, with Rudy at a bar, and I was accused of harassing a woman, and I was only uh, accused of it because she had hit on me pretty blatantly in front of her friends, and I'm assuming she felt embarrassed about it. So instead of owning up to that shitty decision she had made to hit on someone while engaged or married, I forgot whichever she was. Um, she told them that I was harassing her. And I'm not that's not really what I'm upset about. I'm kind of upset about uh the fact that someone almost believed her. I almost got white knighted. You know, you like hear that internet term, the white knights come to defend a girl no matter what. Is what is that? It's, it's like from 4chan, like those oh, those yeah, dudes yeah, that yeah. always defend a girl no matter what. Those what's, fucking what's 4chan? guys. 4chan's a, a forum that has different sections to it. They're like they're B. You ever hear slash B? They're like super famous because all those 4chan will organize events and like raid websites or shut down shit or they're, they're like they shut down like the FBI's website once and like just their users. They're the that's where the anonymous thing comes from because all their users are anonymous. There is no name or anything. It's like evil Reddit basically. Oh my god, that's pretty much what 4chan. Evil Reddit. It's basically evil Reddit. Um, but yeah, so I got white knighted, and then you know this guy like, "Hey man, I don't know what's going on," but uh, and I wanted to be like, "Listen, you like, I, I really wanted to get mad at first, and I kind of did, but I pulled it back towards the end, and um, I ended up just leaving with Rudy." But that shit's real. Like I could, I was almost accused of like sexually harassing some girl randomly, and like, and you know me pretty well. There's no part of my character that's ever even demonstrated some sort no. of no, aggro never. towards. <laughs> it's... God, it's sad. It's no- How many it's guys are in jail because of that? Right, like false. How like, many guys? Uh, you know, a lot type thing. Definitely or? thousands. You think so? Yeah. Thousands. Do, do you hear how many people are just in jail? One out of a hundred Americans. You know what's even crazier? How many uh, people, black people, who are in jail? Like it was like one out of every ten. <laughs> some shit like that number is <sighs> scary. One out of every ten. Like some, some low. Google it Yikes. later, but it was a really low number. You're like, whoa. Yeah, you gotta figure what's out going the on there. Thing too. That's gotta change. You gotta get people out of jail. <laughs> like, Why the fuck are people many, in jail? There's way too many people in jail. Not good. You whole- know, I I did uh, listen to the John Oliver segment on on prison. How'd it go? Oh, that was great. You, did you hear about this? No. He's just nailing it. He's, week he's after killing week. it right now. But like he pointed out, just the absurdity of of having a prison system like this. They there's public companies that are that run prisons. Yeah. And they have shareholders because they're listed publicly on the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, man. So their goal is to make as much money as possible. And that involves. They wrote a letter to their shareholders, boasting about how their prisons had a very high recidivism, meaning they made a lot of money on their prisoners coming back, which means that they are incentivized as a jail. To make sure that the the they create more violent and and uh, criminals that would be more likely to be sent back, their their goal is not to um, rehabilitate no. by any means, because then they don't make money. What's How fucked up is that? And they wrote that to the their public letter to their shareholders <laughs> is boasting about how they had high recidivism. What's what's just as scary as that is that that same company it is, and they do have lobbyists so it's legal for these prison companies to have a lobbyist that would then vote or push towards laws that would incarcerate more humans for less i don't think people realize how big a lobby that is too it's a huge fucking lobby apparently it's a three billion dollar industry well it it incorporates uh prison unions prison guard unions because the more question 
how big <laughs> is the, is the, the lobbyists the for prison? Yeah. How, how also incorporate prison guard unions because they go for uh, like like that whole um three strike law thing. It's really beneficial to have that, especially if you have a if your business is prison, because it's gonna be a lot easier for people to go to jail for bullshit crimes like marijuana, uh, tickets, whatever it may be. It's nonviolent crimes basically. More people go to jail for nonviolent crimes than they do for violent crimes. They Which spend a million dollars a year in lobbying. How much? Private prisons spend million millions on lobbying to put more people in jail. Of course. Report chronicling the political strategies of private prisons. How many One of the biggest um, lobby groups to, to oppose uh, legalization of marijuana is prison guard unions because a Ooh, huge population. Yeah, that makes sense. They uh, would have the same lobby yeah, they efforts, do. right? They do. They do. And the, the, the same group. Uh, a ton of people are in jail for marijuana. So if you make that legal, you're losing a large percentage of your business if your business happens to be incarcerating humans. It's a really sad um, business model. They pay $6 million a year. Which, is there a particular group? Just or Just, the, just uh, if you add together the lobbying efforts of just the, the industry. The, three, the top three companies uh, donate 800, or, or not donate, but pay... Eight hundred thirty-five thousand five hundred fourteen dollars to federal candidates, and that money is swaying people whom we've elected to send more they, other people to spend, jail. They spend six million dollars a year on state politicians. It's so not just lobbying efforts; they no, pay. They're paying politicians, the politicians to vote towards <laughs> crimes that make people go to jail for less shit. Holy shit! It's a scary Dude, for anybody that's listening and and just <laughs> thinks. Like the government's like they're on just, your side. They're cool dudes. They're just looking out for everybody's best effort. They're trying. They're trying to get your back. I don't give a fuck about you. You know what? It's not. It's not black and white. It's not that all of them do or all of them don't. But there's definitely a, a fair amount of of yeah. public elected politicians and and public officials that do not have your back. They are not. No. They are not putting their people, the American people's best interests in priority. Because it's not their best interest. Right. Their best interest is money. Right. And that's not okay. People, and, and that's the other thing. Well, what do you do? What are you going to do about it, Internet. Man? What are you going to do about internet it, Internet is what we do. We've got to get on the this. internet. Yep. What are you going to do on the internet, Absolutely. Alec? You vote. <laughs> you do. Internet do you? Is key. I, I, dude, I, I firmly know, believe. Man. I do. I, 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 I've, I, I've demonstrated this argument to you before with the whole mountain thing. I firmly believe... Let's revisit the mountain thing. The mountain thing? Explain why the mountain thing one more time for me. Okay. Our current model, how I, t how I understand it anyway, of governing things uh, can be representative of, uh, let's say, let's use a mountain to represent it. And we have these people whom we pay and elect to climb said mountain to lead the way, right? Uh, you have lobbyists giving them money, which then gives, gives them supplies to climb up this crazy mountain of leadership. Now, when you have things like the internet a mass tool of spreading information, uh, basically what it is, mass tool to spread information. When you have that, you can create governing bodies of the whole, the whole being the whole fucking planet. Now, if the whole planet is on a platform to elect decisions being made to run the own planet, you remove all the bullshit that goes with that mountain. So then it's from a mountain, it just ends up going into a fucking valley. It's a plain, it's just a flat plain where everyone has an equal say and the resources can be divided up accordingly, uh, whether it be resources to lead or to do whatever, it doesn't matter. And I think the internet is the key to the f future governings. Right, but there's a hole there. And the hole is, there's still those guys that want to keep their job yes. climbing the mountain. Yes, yes. And they have the keys to the mountain. They're dying out. You can only keep that job for so long. You have The internet's around, dude. Like, that job was really secure when fucking we rode horses, and that's that makes sense. But now that we have every answer to anything that's ever existed ever within our but pocket... But where does this tie into voting? Why is voting important, then? Because they're only going to give you options to vote that... Who, well, we are they in that case. Well, well, no, they are they until the, right, until yeah. the laws change. I see what you're saying. So, like, they're only going to give you options mm -hmm. that, uh, that, are, that aren't... They're not even going to give you the option to get rid of them. Right. So, wh why continue to vote in that system? Why not just work around that system and lower the, uh, the mountain yourself? Like, meaning... You told me, you said earlier, it was important to vote. What I'm saying is it's, it's actually detrimental to vote because it perpetrates the idea 
that you are still you still have a voice that that you can actually level out the mountain when what you should be doing is leveling out the mountain on your own. Well, I guess voting and just saying fuck voting. We're just change the system. I don't. I guess I I shouldn't use that vocab word because, and what I mean by voting is I don't go mean go fucking register and go to a ballot. Oh, I mean vote as in like on Reddit as a community. Yeah, all elect to run itself as a community. Vote that way. That's your. That's you. You'd have to do that by just talking. Right. You'd have to. We're doing right now. Convince people. Yeah. Say like this. That's a better way to do things. I mean, it would be like a civil, a ver- like civil, like not like a civil war, but like a very nice way to um, have a revolution, <laughs> like a nonviolent revolution. Yeah, we're just not gonna do what you say anymore. We're just gonna do what we all want. Like you're, you're just a collection of maybe like two hundred people that say you're in charge, but we give you money. Isn't so we're just gonna crazy, do this now. Isn't that the crazy fucking thing? Yeah. There, yeah. There's like you can have what, a revolution with no what, like a thousand people. It's only like a thousand. And then there's like three hundred million. That, and that like we all listen if, to. If like 300 <laughs> million organize, and they're all like, yeah. Hey, old white men. <laughs> like, we're just not. I shouldn't have said white you can, men. You can. That's stupid. Yeah, hey, hey so old people. At the white man. A little bit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if, like, if, if fucking 300 million people were just like, nah. Yeah, just like, mm. Mm. What are you going to do? Nothing. Well, nothing. Because who makes up the military? Us. Like, regular folk. Is that going to happen? Is that like that's America so. waking up? That's I think what that's they're the, talking the next. About, right? I think the next revolution is a nonviolent one. I think I it's don't think it's going to be violent either. At all, I, I think, think it's it going to be like police versus. Nah, because they are us, so. man. That's yeah, us. You're right. That's us over there. They're I think the same they're guys. all going to read their email one day and be like, "Hey guys, we're all going to do this now." I'm like, all right, right. And then they all just <laughs> they all just don't fucking listen to yeah. meet the, what like a thousand people that live in Washington, D.C. I just think we live in the most fucking interesting time ever. Best time to be around. Well, man, good job, good podcast. We did, we did it. We did it today. We pulled it through, pulled it out. Number fourteen in the bank. This is a good spot to uh, <laughs> podcast from too. This is where Alec uh, just hit a PR squat. Yeah, of three thirty. This is my platform. I got three thirty on back squat, two seventy five front squat. That's awesome. Fucking awesome. I had a clean PR this week. What'd you of, get? Of uh, one thirty one kilo. That's a three hundred and thirty five pounds. No. Not over 300 though. What? I'm not over 300. 137 and a half is 300. I can't clean over 300 pounds. Yeah, you can. <laughs> no. Maybe I'm just overly confident in there. You are. <laughs> You're so sweet. I'm a sweetie pie. I'm polite as fuck. It's 282 or 288. 288. Oh, speaking of apply as fuck, if you guys like really cool shirts, oh, yeah. we're not getting paid for this no, at all. They're not Kyle a sponsor. Just, Kyle actually is wearing one of the shirts right now. It says From the Future. It's a, f- it's a fucking great shirt. But there's this company called uh, Buy Me Brunch. Yes. And they started out from, a f- I guess th- they were influenced by that photo of Hunter S. Thompson and Bill Murray on a boat. And uh, Bill Murray had a shirt on with a, like a revolver on it. It said, Buy Me Brunch. <laughs> and Hunter S. Thompson had a shirt on that said, Polite as fuck. <laughs> It's fucking great. Yeah, and they, they have all company. these shirts influenced by that. They're now. awesome. They're, they're all hilarious. in that sort of vein. Yeah, you know, they're all, all in, that in that sort of li- hey, vibe. Dude. Yeah, chill. But fucking we're fucking funny. awesome. <laughs> like, they're all conversation starters. Yes. They're great t-shirts. They're all gray. They're made of yeah, like yeah. That, that perfect gray like, like quality, warm material. Warm, almost. Super comfortable. Um, it's fucking t-shirt. phenomenal. Check out their website. It's called me buymebrunch.com. Buy me it's good shit. It's great shit. Quality. Yeah. So... Check right, that shit out. I uh, hope you guys had a good week this week. We definitely did. All right, man. Let's do this again. Te amo, everybody. Adios, amigos.